Hi, I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and today we're talking about some amazing products from a company called Kiloview. They make the NDI uh, encoder that we talked about previously, and today we're going to go over their RTSP encoder and decoder products. We have here the G1, which is a wireless or wired RTSP encoder. It does many other things, but that's what we're talking about today. And we have the DC220, which is a decoder. Now, these products are both great in their own right, but together they allow you to do something amazing, which is utilize your existing IP infrastructure and your existing SDI infrastructure to work together to get the leverage, the benefits of IP with your existing gear. So for people who don't have IP enabled switchers, um, like an ATEM or a Roland or other traditional SDI gear, this is going to let you, for example, take a camera into a classroom on a cart and encode that to RTSP over the school's infrastructure, send that signal back to your control room and decode that into SDI. There are many other applications for this. Um, the G1, which is the encoder, could also be used independently of the DC220 with something like a copy of vMix, which can read RTSP natively, and we'll go into that a little bit. And the DC220 can be used by itself to encode, uh, decode an RTSP stream for a monitor, say in a church lobby that you wanted to, or any kind of lobby, where you want to decode a stream uh, inexpensively into from... DVI into HDMI to drive a series of monitors uh, to very inexpensively get your message out across a campus, for example. So let's take a closer look at each of these products individually and then in concert. Let's first take a look at the G1. This is an SDI encoder. This is also available in HDMI. It's called the G2. So it has an input here for SDI and a loop through. Here's your Ethernet port. This is kind of important because this device is for encoding RTSP. So it, basically the video is coming in SDI and out RTSP. We also have audio inputs and loop through output for headphones, power, um, USB for firmware updates. And if you saw our NDI uh, video on the E1, this may look very familiar to you. The big difference here, this one has Wi-Fi links. So these are for connecting to your local Wi-Fi network. And then we also have USB. Uh, this is for connecting USB devices or uh, LTE um, enabled modems. So you can actually use this device to broadcast over a single LTE device. SD port for putting SD cards in there. You can record to SD and all important power switch. Let's take a look at the UI. This is the G1's UI. It's pretty easy to log into. We just go to our browser and enter in the IP address of the unit and a username and password. And we're presented with a lot of information about the status of the system, how much CPU it's using, free memory, uh, whether it's encoding something or recording, what its uh, streaming settings are, and then we ha also have a list of menus down the side. If this looks at all familiar to you for from the um, E1 demo, that's because they obviously they're very similar systems. They're just uh, programmed a little bit different and uh, the hardware is slightly different to accommodate the Wi-Fi. So the important settings here, if we go to like audio video settings, we have the ability to crop, um, adjust color and brightness, adjust what uh, the audio source is. Um, we can go into the um, encoding settings. Uh, this is for motion JPEG snapping. This is just for giving you a little preview of what's going on currently, not our actual stream. This is our actual stream here, our H.264 uh, main stream. We can also configure it into uh, main and substream. So we can have two different streams going simultaneously. If I want to set the settings for this main stream, I can go through and set what the frame rate is or bit rate. We can up the bit rate a little bit and um, go back to its settings and see it's 1920 by 1080, um, whether we're recording or not, what we're recording in, so we can set what the file format to record to a USB or uh, SD card is. So we have MPEG TS, MP4, MOV, Matroska, AVI, what that bit rate is, what the largest size, what to do if it runs out of space. It's all very uh, intelligent 
and designed for hands-off operation. Um, going back to the dashboard, um, whether we're recording or not, we can start and stop the record via the web UI, but you know, when they say there's an app for that, well, there's an app for this. So they have an application that can run on your Android or iPhone to start and stop recording, start and stop streaming, adjust your streams, uh, set the destination, etc. You can actually stream to multiple destinations simultaneously. They have RTMP, HLS, TSUDP, SProxy, and SIP. We can add multiple of the same kind. So if I want to add another RTMP stream, I can keep doing that all within limits of what the CPU is capable of handling, which is going to be a function of the number of streams, whether it's recording, the resolution, the bit rate, the frame rate, etc. So we can actually do quite a lot with this one unit simultaneously. Um, it has uh, settings for USB attached. We can also put um, overlays on the video if we want as we're recording it. Um, one of the interesting features uh, I don't have hooked up right now is the ability to control a uh, PTZ camera via RS-232, 485, or 422, and then we get a PTZ control panel which then lets us control it either from here or via ONVIF. So if we have a PTZ camera in another room and we need to make an adjustment to it and we set this up, that's an easy way for us to make adjustments to that. So that is the G1's encoder. Let's take a quick look at the DC220. The DC220 is a fairly simple and straightforward device. It has relatively few connectors on it. So on one side, we've got Ethernet. This is for the incoming RTSP stream. We have a DVI port. This is for DVI, HDMI, and VGA connectors. If you want to drive a monitor using any one of those, that's the most likely connector. Then, of course, we have SDI, which is the real value-added option. If you wanted to drive any kind of SDI monitor, this is the way to go. We also have a uh, microphone in and audio out. So if we're connecting uh, to an audio uh, SDI device that doesn't have audio or for some reason um, this is uh, you're going to a set of speakers which is different from your monitor, the audio out becomes very important. Power, um, and then we have a USB connector, which I'm led to believe is for playing back uh, clips instead of decoding RTSP. So with that, let's take a look at the UI. The DC220 UI is pretty simple. You just enter in the IP address, username and password, and you're presented by the overview here, which gives us an idea of how long it's been running, how hard it's working to decode RTSP, um, what is being decoded on the DVI. Uh, I have a 1920 by 1080 stream um, being decoded at 30 frames per second for a 10 megabit stream, um, what the network status is, etc. And the neat thing about the DC220 is that it can decode separately to the SDI and the DVI. So if I wanted to drive two different monitors off of this, I could. And looking at the DVI settings, decode settings, all I had to do is enter in the URL given to me by the G1. Um, the G1 just gives a, a an URL that I can copy over to here and paste it, and it instantly puts it up onto my screen. There is also a bunch of other um, factors here if we want to uh, adjust the decoding buffer. Right now I have it set for real time, but depending on your network infrastructure or if you're doing Wi-Fi, you may want to uh, have a, a, a buffer and say time is not as important um, for you you know, the, the delay if you're broadcasting to uh, another campus and a, a two or three second delay is, uh, is irrelevant, then you could have a very large buffer. But within the same facility, if you've got somebody who can be watching that monitor and watching the stage at the same time, you would want to go to a really low, uh, low latency. And we can do the same thing for the SDI. We could just punch in the URL and the SDI would be putting out a, the same or different stream. So that's really a lot of flexibility. It can decode uh, more than just RTSP. It could decode RTMP. It could decode an MPEG TS stream. And then we have our display settings independent, again, for SDI and DVI, um, the color space, the video resolution, um, what the audio is being uh, is being done. 
audio settings for um, turning up the audio um, output uh, up and down as you need. And that's pretty much it. The DC220's UI is pretty straightforward. It's just decoding a stream uh, out the two ports. And now let's look at them in concert. So for this test, we have the ADA 6G camera hooked up, outputting HD SDI into the G1 here, which is encoding it via uh, into 1920 by 1080 RTSP, going off through our network infrastructure and coming back to the decoder which is decoding it into via the DVI port into HDMI going in on this monitor. And if you take a quick look at the monitor there, you can see there's a negligible amount of latency there. So the whole timing of going from camera to encoding to decoding is all under a second. And that's with some buffering uh, to account for any network latency um, in a you know non-production environment so if you're going through wireless um, you've got you know a lot of decoding latency in a wireless stream so this is the whole round trip of that encode and decode stream from the camera to the monitor the other um, version is to use the g1 with vmix so let's take a look at how that works VMix has the ability to decode RTSP streams. So we can go into VMix and click stream, and then we can add our uh, stream, which is the same information that we gave, uh, we were giving, given to the decoder, and we just click OK. And now we have our decode stream. So it's actually decoding it twice. Um, we don't need two copies of that. So here is our decode stream being brought in from the camera into vmix with relatively low latency so that's a real quick way to um, get video into vmix via the g1 encoder and with that that is uh, a couple of the different things that the g1 and the dc220 can do separately and in concert I hope you found the pairing of the G1 and the DC220 together as interesting as I do. It's a really great way to utilize existing infrastructures to leverage modern technology like IP and the flexibility behind it with your existing uh, SDI uh, equipment. So this is a, a great product offering in and of itself or together in concert. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to check out our website, usbroadcast.co, check out our Facebook page, and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. <laughs>